you still are. Yeah. Do we need to find a spot? I feel like I'm more fine. I don't smell, do I? <laughs> There's just some reason I'm asking oh. because I've been using a um, an apple cider vinegar rinse. So, oh. so I just want to make sure I. <laughs> no, I don't smell. I don't. I don't smell anything. <laughs> okay, good. The Lady from the Black Lagoon oh, by Mallory O'Mara? That's how I was saying it. Yeah. Which is a biography of... Well, it's kind of a biography. That's what I was trying to decide while I was reading yes. it. I mean, because I, I actually checked to see if it was in the biography section, but it's not. So it's... It's basically Omera's journey to discover more about Millicent Patrick, who created the creature from the Black Lagoon from the Universal films in the 50s. Or the, this one was made in the 50s. Mm -hmm. um, and when she says created, she didn't like build the costume, but she designed it on paper and sent it to the next person. Um, but because she was a woman artist in the 50s she got no credit well there was a bunch of factors that got no credit but that's mm -hmm. boiled down to a sentence that's basically i liked it better than i thought it's not the best written book okay. but i found that um that i definitely learned a lot more about the film industry and also about the life of millicent patrick who i knew nothing about yes. I mean, but she went by several names. Several though. names, yeah. She kept changing her identity. Well, she stayed the same with, like, she loved glamour and whatnot, but mm -hmm. but she, uh, as she went through different phases of her life, she changed her name, which I think is cool. I wish I could do that, like, every, you know, every couple of years, just different name. Well, at different phases of your life, I think you should be able to reinvent yourself. Yeah. I just love the fact that, um, People view us completely differently. I mean, completely in a different way than we actually are. I agree with you about how it was written. I think the biography was fascinating, mm -hmm. and then it was like part biography, part social commentary, and then I found the third part in a way it felt like a really badly written high school essay. Like no, it, I can see that. And it, but since it wasn't all badly written high school essay, it, it was still fascinating enough and, and easy enough to read. Stuff about Hollywood and and uh, Millicent Patrick working in the different films and stuff, I, I thought that was absolutely entertaining. Mm -hmm. I also found certain parts, or maybe just certain aspects of, of the book repetitive. She, right. she really um, hammered um, into your head just how um, how unequal women were treated in the film industry then. Right. I mean, but then again, those issues are still prevalent in this day and age. Right. But that was her point as well. Another weird thing, because along those lines of like how women are treated, and it's just popping off that book, because she'd go on the, the press tour, mm -mm. and she kept talking about how all these articles kept talking about how her looks and her looks over and over and I just thought that was kind of ironic in the sense that every time she would mention like I found a photograph and she was so glamorous <laughs> or she was like I can just picture her at her writing desk and her heels looking mm -hmm. so beautiful and I'm like well you're you're also right. kind of hammering down on her appearance as well. Mm -hmm. A few sketches that they did have in the book she's she's a really good artist oh, I like a fantastic artist Sorry, I feel like I'm in your space. I'm trying to no. get out of the well, we'll, like, <laughs> we'll just keep we'll just keep moving towards this this third of the frame. I was uh, very fascinated and intrigued by the story about the um, Westmore family. Yeah, I didn't know anything that about that. That was them. insane. I I was just so taken aback that the father George was so um, upset that he was being. Um, dimmed by the light of his sons right that he killed himself that is crazy i just think that he he was
but um, have a sense of accomplishment from you know having his, his sons he, be so successful. I mean, but they're so ruthless. Though, well, that's so. how he raised them all. So even Bud was like that, where mm -hmm. you know he he wasn't getting credit, so he he. Well, he got, didn't really deserve the credit. Yeah, but he, he didn't see himself being like getting credit that he thought he was deserved. Mm -hmm. So he just like ruined not only uh, Millicent's career in Hollywood, but just apparently just was just a terrible person. But George was interesting. I liked how he he earned a little extra cash practicing his makeup at the whorehouse <laughs> and then spent said cash right back. <laughs> I mean... Well, hey, I mean... You, you still okay with the light? <laughs> Scoot up. I really enjoyed it more than I thought. Yeah, I did too. Because this was definitely one of those ones that I solely wanted to read because of the cover. I just. It's very I. I thought I the cover him. was neat. So and then when I you know it said something about the Black Lagoon, so I figured about the monster, and I think monsters are cool. Have you watched the creature from the Black Lagoon? Okay. <laughs> so as we were as I was reading through it. She would mention the different films, so mm -hmm. she worked at Disney as the color animation artist, and I, I didn't know, like, it took me a second to realize what she meant mm -hmm. until I went and pulled up Fantasia and saw, like, exactly what she was talking about, and um, especially when animation was getting started, it almost looks like, like a scene could be like fog so like how the gray because nothing's actually moving so the way the gray moves in a certain way mm -hmm. or how like certain reflections on water because it's not an actual image but it's weight so that's what and she described them as pastels mm -hmm. so I went through and watched the uh, the uh, the bald mountain scene of Fantasia mm -hmm. with the, the creature which I remember it being creepy and even watching it now it's still like it's creepy. It's like the creepiest Disney thing. I don't know if you've ever seen it. But. It's been years, but I did watch it. I, I just remember certain aspects, but not the whole thing. So yeah, I went and watched that scene of Fantasia, and then she mentioned how she was in the background of The Reluctant Dragon, so mm -hmm. I found that and watched that you? scene. And then over the weekend, we kept getting further, and I pulled up her IMDb page, because um, they started to mention all the, the films that she was an extra in. Mm -hmm. And then there was... Uh, four films, three other films besides Black Lagoon that was mentioned that she worked uncredited in special effects. Mm -hmm. So Saturday night, I was like, you know what? We're not doing anything else. I should be reading, but instead I watched, I watched, uh, it came from outer space, followed by the creature from the Black Lagoon. Uh -huh. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> Why not? Why not? So I finished it off with this island. Really? So I watched the three out of the four creature films that she created. So. Well, I'm so glad you did because I never got around to it's, it. It is good. It still kind of holds up. Um, I mean, granted, the, the costume does look obviously yeah, dated. Mm -hmm. And some of the, the acting or the style is a little bit. Mm -hmm. little bit. But it's, as, as, a, as a whole and as a creature, it still, it still holds up. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's pretty... It's not surprising that the Gill Man is still so, so relevant and well known. I guess. Yes, I kept thinking of the Shape of Water, and I'm sure that that movie. I did too. I was also fascinated and glad that she um, included how um, I mean, just the uh, whole process of making, you know, an animated film. I mean, right. It wasn't the whole process, but she did. How describe Disney, some of how it, Disney yeah. did it, and how vast the project is overall mm. how it's not just like a couple of guys in a basement it's a whole almost like an assembly line oh yeah it's so right. oh and then it, i didn't even though i saw the actors back to back i didn't quite put it together until later that the same actor that's the lead in it came from outer space is the same actor that's the lead in the black lagoon oh. he was an astronomer okay. and it came from outer space, and he played the the scientist in the Black Lagoon. Okay. So he was quite familiar with her monsters, apparently. <laughs> but sure enough, on the uh, as the credits are rolling by, real big, it says Bud Westmore. <laughs> well, that had 
to be big to suit his <laughs> ego, you know. Oh my gosh, if anyone was equal maniacal, he's, he certainly was. Just the whole family, just so ruthless. I just cannot believe just how how power hungry some people can be. Mm -hmm. Just to the point of killing yourself because your sons are outshining you. Help create Barbie, which was interesting. Like screw over their own brothers where he was going to get the job, so he oh, took them out. Oh, that's got right. Him, got Drunk. Him faster, <laughs> so he, he couldn't make his he couldn't make his interview. I just could not believe that. And then and then they offered him the job that he wanted, but they couldn't take pride in it because he wasn't their first choice. Uh, well, I mean, just power and prestige. People just really hunger after it yeah, and they lose, their, lose their minds. I would say her life was quite. Fascinating. Oh, we from, didn't, yes, from, we need to discuss that. She grew up at the Hearst Mansion, which is the he was the journalist in California that they based Citizen Kane off of, and then from there worked for. She went from work living at Hearst Mansion to working for Disney to working for Universal. They like just they are her. It seems her charmed, is, but then again, it. It had um, very sad and um, right. dark, um, I don't know if undertones is the right word, but... Well, she she uh, worded it in a way where she was, she mentioned how it was fascinating, but people wouldn't say that she made it. Mm -hmm. And, but it's still, like, that's still a... Her, her best friend was the dude from Bewitched. Like, that was, that's really, mm -hmm. I don't know, I found her, I found the biography sections of the story quite quite fascinating. Oh, I agree. They were probably the most fascinating. And I was really saddened by the fact that she was estranged from her family and it never really seemed like they they reconciled. I mean, mm -hmm. So that was really sad that they couldn't um, um, enjoy, I guess, the, um, not fame, I mean, because she didn't really, well, I guess it, well, they it depends on how you define it. They didn't like that she, they seemed very she very, seemed very immoral in their eyes. Yeah, they seemed very <clears throat> reserved. She wanted to wear the fancy dresses and 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 high heels and and date the married <laughs> man. <laughs> it's just not with their uh, right. I guess their family. Well, I guess it was more her dad. They didn't really her mention mom her mom had at all. I sort of got the idea that she had some mental issues. Yeah. I mean, well, mental just, health issues, I should say. She just pretty. I feel just went. Went along with whatever Camille mm -hmm. would say. Well, he was so domineering. Right. Once again, I guess you sort of have to be working, you know, as a structural engineer and just... I guess part of her whole life was just succumbing to the absurd wills of power-hungry men. I think that's why she didn't fight back when Bud fired her for, for the... Um, attention and renown that she was getting for the movie on the pu publicity tour. I was surprised and heartened at the same time that there were some male colleagues at Universal who who were um, in a somewhat powerful position who who were trying to help right. keep her there. I, well, I googled Bud Westmore. He is not, he does not look like I thought he would. <laughs> done that yet but he, um he looks like a leave it the beaver dude like it's it's surprising like this wholesome nice guy i hated him <laughs> i mean <laughs> i don't usually get invested in 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 characters but with just people like that i don't know i you just can't help but just resent them for who they yeah but i mean were. but a minor a minor thing i i always drives me crazy when Folks put pictures like in between paragraphs. It's like, but they did a really good job of like fitting the pictures in wherever there was. Mm -hmm. Like, you could finish the paragraph and then there was the picture. Favorite picture, and I didn't realize it was in the book till later because I saw it when I. I wanted to. I googled her. This one. This is my favorite oh, picture. Yeah. <laughs> where she created this mask for this Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Mr. Hyde movie with. Abbott and Costello, but she's wearing the mask backwards, and that's, I really, I think that kind of summed up 
who she was in a way where she was she's still wearing her dress but she's still being playful and she's still got her like you know she's taking pride in her work and it's an interesting read I do have to um, include and admit that the footnotes these were bad but I mean they just brought back some paper memories <laughs> just the footnotes <laughs> I thought they worked I thought they worked and I liked how they were at the bottom of the page so I didn't have to flip to the back of the it was a well-designed book, very well-designed. So next up, a, uh, a detour of sorts. <laughs> and we'll be taking we... on the Bromance Book Club by Lissa? I, I guess. Lissa K. Adams? So, uh, this is going to be interesting, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully not too painful. Well, hopefully it's, if it's good, there's three more. So. Okay. So. There's always that possibility. Oh gosh. Okay. Um, I'm up for it. Let's do this. So I figured out why those chips are called the <laughs> haunted ghost pepper. Okay. And it is because when you think you're safe, they come haunt you early in the morning. is still definitely a little run in. Definitely feel it in my tum tum and got the heartburn so bad to feel it in my back. If you or a loved one was diagnosed with heartburn so bad to feel it in my back, you may be entitled to financial compensation. It's been been a little over an hour. Did did people watch? 